Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. We're gonna have some fun today and if you're new here, please subscribe and hit that little bell icon to be notified of future videos. Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and today we're in a different part of my home. Normally we're right behind my camera there in my art studio where I produce art videos for a hungry artistic world. But recently I shared some shelving that I use to put up um, some of my artwork and maximize storage. My studio is very small and I know a lot of people are in the same situation I am where you're trying to make things work in a small space. So I'd love to share with you about what these shelves are, the company, how you can get them, and why I love them so much. All right, here we go. In this video, I'll be joined by my little sidekick, Jackson, and another special guest. All right, so here's the problem. We don't have enough room in small studios, so we need storage solutions. And I have found that there is a lot of room often up high on walls where we don't utilize any storage space. I needed some more room for my paintings and things I was keeping in storage for my Etsy shop. And I had some Ikea shelves, but I was looking for some real wood shelves to put in a little part of my home that I'm calling my tiny gallery. So here are the shelves that I found on Amazon. The company is Aski or Asky. I'm not sure how to say it. Real wood is what I love about them, picture shelves. And I also love that they come in a variety of colors and sizes. These are the ones that I got. I also got the 24 inch the 36 inch and the 48 inch sizes to work with. But the great thing about these is they are real wood and you can cut them to a custom size if needed. Each product that I purchased came in a set of two and some of the color options were white, this natural color, and also a really neat looking whitewash color. Each color gives you different size options to choose from, and there's even an espresso color that comes in a 56 inch size. I loved the fact that they had some installation videos showing how to install these, and each set comes with hardware of plastic anchors, screws, and a tiny level. A screwdriver will be needed for installation, and if you are needing to use the plastic anchors, you will of course need a drill and the plastic anchors included. Of course, a screw gun makes this job much faster. Let me tell you a little story about our renovated farmhouse. Once upon a time, there was a couple who lost a lot during the flood of 2017 and Hurricane Irma. We had to renovate this house and find a new place to live in the process. So, with a lot of work, we took, yes, believe it or not, this dilapidated home and turned it into a sweet little farmhouse for us to live in. Now we are just so thankful uh, because the challenge of the flood has relocated to a place that I love so much now. I met one of my best friends when she was just a little baby calf and her name's Oreo and she's been my buddy while we've lived here. Now this is the kitchen before, it was a very old style kitchen. The house is a 1950s house. This is the kitchen afterwards. We took down a lot of walls, gutted the whole house. I really need to make a YouTube channel just for home renovations. This is the old bathroom, oh my gosh, that tile. And this is our new bathroom. The house is about a 13, hundred square foot house. Uh, this is my art room that I have now. Look how dark and dreary this room was. And now this is from an outside view looking into my art studio. So now let's take a look outside and see if I can find a handyman to help me install these shelves. I mentioned in my last video, see, I do have a tractor in my backyard and <laughs> a few other things. So it's all still a work in progress, but man, I wish I could find some handyman to help me. Let me take a look around, see if I can find someone maybe behind the Chevy truck. Hey, sir, could I borrow you or get your services to hang some shelves for me? Well, um, yeah, I'm normally not for hire. But... <laughs> All right, how about a good dinner and, um, you know, just uh, a massage? How about that? <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's do it. Uh, all right, let's do it. Get your tools. Come on. <laughs> I know we're gonna need that. Oh yeah, we need that. Look at those clouds that. in the background. Oh my goodness. Sorry, my artistic brain. 
Beautiful. Oh, it's so pretty, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I need to bring my easel out here. Dang, I gotta take a picture of that. Sorry, honey. I'll be I'll be there in just a second. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> Whoa, look at those clouds. And now that I have my assistants, my little Jackson, and my hubby Todd, I'm ready to get started. Now my husband is incredibly handy and could have actually built these shelves himself, but it was nice to have them pre-made. Ignore that uh, inversion table <laughs> to the left there. This is a little cabinet that he made that really helped me because my kitchen doesn't have a pantry. These doors on either side hide my canned items, and in the center I made a little curtain that also provides useful kitchen storage solutions. My husband also included an outlet within the unit with some USB ports and some working lights underneath. And now it's definitely time to install these shelves. This is the little area where I had installed the previous shelves that I had purchased and I just love them so much. I don't use them just to display artwork, but it's a very practical place for me to keep multiple pieces of artwork prior to shipping, framing, or taking to an art show. Now I realized I actually had another wall in my tiny home where I could install more shelving and maximize storage even more. Now behind this mirrored closet door, I actually use this for more art supplies. I have some of the brown paper that I used in a previous video. I actually used it on that little part of the closet there just to tear it off, which is really nice. And thank you to the company Brico for this awesome paper. And I have more artwork. So it will be nice to reclaim the closet space for this guest bedroom so we can actually have guests. All right, let's get started installing these beautiful all wood shelves from ASCII purchased on Amazon. Honey, how about you go over some of the tools that we would need to do this job? Okay. Um, well, you need a level. Okay. To make sure all the shelves are level. Right. You need a pencil. Yes. To mark where they're going. A measuring tape and I'll go over where uh, you would measure from. Okay. Uh, a screwdriver or I use a power screwdriver makes it easier. Definitely. And uh, just a box knife to be able to open the product. Right. That's good. Andy. And a cup of coffee. I'll nice. Use. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Yay. Okay. We got the product in from Amazon. Yes. And you know it comes in a nice little box. Uh, just rip it open. And they're packed pretty well, yeah, actually. Aren't they? Um, yeah. They're they've got this foam in the middle of them, so it helps uh, keep them from banging together. Yeah, and it's real wood. Yeah, that's so one thing I liked about, about the about advantages them. of that. Yeah, that's uh, you know, a lot of the products I have today are um, particle board. A lot of this, the KD furniture they call it KD is knockdown furniture. So it uh, makes it easier to assemble it with the little cam locks and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I'd rather have uh, real wood. Mm. Um, this has like a little instruction sheet. Nice. Shows you what you should have with it. Okay. Now, do you notice something else about opening the package that's really nice? Can you smell that wood? Oh, oh my yeah. goodness, it smells so good. It's natural, and that's what I love about this product too. All yeah. natural. Real wood. Yeah, and they used a, uh, a torch to burn it. Looks How awesome. do they do that? They use it with a little uh, torch. Okay. Which, which I could do a demo on that later. Okay. So um, it's not actually stained. Now, well, they probably put a, a, a sealer over the top of it after okay. they burn it. Oh, it smells um, so good. But this is actually pretty cool. I okay. told you you needed a level, mm -hmm. and it actually comes with a level. Look at that. Hold it still for a second. So you can... Nice. You have they even give you a level. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go. A level there when you and you've got these little anchors uh, that you would use in sheetrock where you don't have a stud. Which mm -hmm. I'm going to try to find a stud at least for one screw on each one because it'll right. make it a little stronger. It will. Yes. And um, uh, would you need a stud finder for this project? Well, maybe. I found my stud right there. <laughs> yeah, okay. What's this technique for people who don't have a stud finder? Well, usually, if you see a, uh, a switch or an outlet, an outlet is normally um, 
it's nailed to a stud. So there's gonna be a stud on either side of this outlet. Ah, gotcha. So that's hollow. The stud's there. You can you can kind of hear it and feel it too if you tap along your wall. That's more solid. Right. So the stud's there. Yes. Normally, uh, in a normal house, the studs are gonna be on 16 inch centers. Okay. So if I marked the stud, uh, 16 inches over. They should be another one here, okay. one at 32, or 16. one at 48. So they should be one every 16 inches. Yep. Now, yep. that should be. Should be. <laughs> not home builder or some of the older homes are, are not set up that way. Install at your own risk. So we can't guarantee it. What we'll do is um, we'll take one and um, get the height. Yes. And the best way to measure it's really not off the floor because you, your eye goes towards the ceilings when you walk in. Mm -hmm. So it's best to measure down instead yes. of up. Yes. Um, but you know, um, you know, this is about level with the ones that are mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So we need to determine on what height you want. Yes. Now let me share real quickly. Um, again, I want to reinforce one of the points of this video is finding storage in small spaces or where you think, oh, I don't have any room for anything. And something I've learned is to maximize the height. Um, if it's not just for hanging a pretty picture, if it's literally for storage, why not maximize um, the fact that you've got some height um, up high on your wall. Now, we only have eight-foot ceilings, but um, that's why in this room, I am actually going to put two levels, I believe. What do you think, honey? Two levels like we did in there? Yeah, I think, um, I think and maybe even do a, a stagger. Yeah, it uh, might. We'll, we'll, let's determine that. Okay, we will. All right, yeah. so that's kind of up to your uh, discretion, viewers, you know, how you want to do that. Oh, this wood, it just smells so good. Let the installation begin. First, oh, a little coffee break and a little quick lunch. I made some homemade chili. So we've got to determine the spacing and distance between shelves, once again, to maximize storage, more so than just hanging things to be aesthetically pleasing. So after making a few measurements, we're ready to go. We're basing the height on the shelves I previously installed which worked well for the typical size artwork that I create. So you may want to customize where you put your shelves based on what sizes of things that you paint. So um, that's totally up to you. But my measurements are going to be 16 and 36. Was that the other one? Um, I think so. Yeah. 16 down for one shelf and then 36 down for the next shelf. Now I'm using these shelves primarily for putting up my paintings and for painting storage. However, you could use them for whatever your needs are, as long as something can fit on a narrow shelf. Um, it could be for art supplies, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of acrylic inks or anything that you need it for. Also too, I've seen where people can put little hooks underneath shelves like this and hang things like paint brushes or whatever. The sky's the limit. You can get creative with these things. And now we've also decided that we're gonna stagger the lower two shelves because if I have a piece of artwork that's larger, um, this one is uh, about two feet high. So we're coming down, what, 24 and a half inches, honey? Uh, 24. 24 inches yeah. here. Yeah. And then the next shelf, rather than going straight across. Yeah, let me demonstrate this one. Okay, oh, there's if, that bigger one. If you had it. A large painting. Um, I would have the ability, flexibility, to store multiple sizes. <laughs> and here we go again, installing the second level of shelving. On this one, um, we actually, there's a stud next to this light switch. Right. And, um, but I think it went right next to it. Let's see here. Yeah, oh, I got it. Awesome. Yeah. And the great thing is because these are wood, if you don't hit a stud where the pre-drilled holes are, 
you can just Move drill it. right through the wood. You know? Yeah, as long as you have a power drill, that'd be power hard drill. to do. Oh, with, with a, a handheld. With a handheld. For sure. And if you have, you know, at least one, preferably the one in the middle, the way I've got this one, into a stud, the other two are just basically holding it. Level. Balancing, yeah. Yeah, so one in a stud would be plenty. Yes. Um, you know, for the weight capacity of the shelves. Yeah, especially if you're using this for, you know, uh, paintings. The way that I typically do my paintings is to have them in the clear bags with the foam core board. But if you were doing a lot of framed paintings, and once again, they'll only fit, you know, a few if they're framed, maybe two if they're framed. But um, that's the only time you would have more weight on the shelf. Now, these are the shelves where I'm going to store a lot of my artwork that I've just finished or specifically artwork I haven't put on my Etsy shop yet, or I may flip-flop it, but anyway, they the positioning of the paintings has some organization to it um, because I have to keep up with the things that I've put on the Etsy shop versus things that I need to put on it. So, you know, kind of keep that in mind when you're designing your shelves and uh, make it work for whatever you, your needs are. The shelves are ready for the artwork, and this is the fun part. I'm trying to resist the urge to position the artwork for just pretty purposes and rather for practical purposes. Now, you saw I put up a little basket on the top shelf so you can get as creative as possible with your placement and storage options. All right, honey, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right, sorry guys, I can't lend my husband out <laughs> and I'm just gonna keep him, how about that? <laughs> so thanks for bearing with a little departure in Monet Cafe and thanks to my awesome hubby for his help. All right guys, happy painting and happy storage solutions. All right, until next time. And for bearing with me with a little bit of a different style. <laughs> are such a great answer for small, for any practical storage space idea. When I was looking for some shelves and uh, 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 I asked the company, that's kind of long.